Welcome to the Photography, the show where we teach you photography, Photoshop, and more for the use of YouTube monetization friendly naked people. Sean can't be here today because it's Sean's birthday. <laughs> Don't you cry, Buttercup. He's off getting his wasty face with Jameson and getting his freak on with some Winnie the Dog Shop, which, meanwhile, I'm here to teach you guys how to body paint in Photoshop. So I was disappointed to find out that no one is being painted. Yeah, no. Do you know how long it takes to body paint somebody? We're gonna do this in Photoshop, bitches. Come on, let's do a tutorial. It's Photoshop time! At first, our idea was we were just gonna paint people. It was just gonna take hours and hours, and we don't have hours and hours to do this stuff. We have day jobs. So what we decided was the magic of Photoshop. I hate tutorials that expect that you've never used Photoshop before and hold your hand through all the setup and explain the most simple features in super detail, and this ain't that kind of tutorial. <laughs> and if you don't know how to open a file or use a marquee selection tool, then maybe you should try using one of those other Photoshop tutorials for beginners before you go all super composite and crazy. All right, now, as you can see, I've taken the liberty to pre-censor our subject today because, as you all know, female nipples are the devil and will lead to the downfall of society. All right, so the first thing to do is key out your subject. Bam. How'd I do that? This ain't no keying tutorial. If you guys want to see a keying tutorial, say so in the comment section and we'll give you what you demand in a future episode, maybe. Because today is all about body painting, which actually also applies to recoloring anything, actually. So she's a ninja turtle, right? And what color are turtle skin? Green, that's right, you're doing great, kids. Now, you could just make a new layer, grab your brush, press the up brackets key to make it big, bigger, bigger. There we go, paint all over her. And set that blend mode to color, and you're done, right? Oh. No, that looks like poopy caca. I delete that shame on you. Shame. See, the thing about skin is it's different colors and different hues depending on whether it's shadows, midtones, or highlights. If we look at the cartoons, we can see that even though there's a solid color hue covering most of the body and the highlights and shadows, the hue is different because that's how light and skin work. So in order to get an effect that looks natural, we're going to be layering in different shades of color and attaching them to different luminance values. But Alex, that sounds complicated and mathy. Yeah, fuck that. We're artists. We don't do maths on this show. I'm going to show you the most super awesome and powerful compositing tool in Photoshop that you probably didn't even know existed. It's the most versatile tool ever for photo work, and it's called Blend If. So if we undo deleting that poopy color layer with Control Z and double click on it, it'll open up the Layer Styles menu. And if we look down here, we see controls for Blend If. Now, if you've ever messed with these before, you know that any results you get are just the worst. Yeah, that looks nasty. But if you alt-click on that arrow, boom, it separates. And now you can just pull one piece of the slider over and ooh, look at that sweet, sweet blending. Now, we're still gonna delete this layer, cause, yo. Know. So I'm gonna just pull up this lovely little screenshot here and color pick the green that I need and then go down to my yin yang panel and select solid color. Boom, look at that color. That's a nice color right there. Now right click on that layer and click Create Clipping Mask. Ooh, would you look at that? Instant perfection. Now we can select color from the blend mode. It looks just as poopy as when we use that painted layer though, doesn't it? Create another solid color. This time, make it brighter yellow or green. Now set that also to color blend mode. Now double click on that mofo and get ready to use your Amaze Balls Blend If. Bring your black slider about halfway over and you can see how it's kind of going to work. Now I'll click on that mother lover and break that son of a bitch and bring it further into your highlights and ooh, look at that, now we're getting somewhere. Now repeat this step for the shadows using a darker, maybe more blue or green, and pulling the white arrows over to the left of the blend if options. Yay! Now we have proper skin tones. Sort of. So doesn't look right though, does it? That's because even though we have the colors right, the luminance values aren't representing our green skin. They're representing pasty white people's skin. So we gotta fix that probably. 
Now there's a lot of ways to do that in Photoshop, and a lot of you would probably reach for the exposure or the levels tool, but fuck that! That shit's for losers who sit alone in the cafeteria. We're gonna use the ultra slimming and always sexy curves tool. Now go to that yin yang curves and throw that mother level beneath your solid color layers. Now in the curves properties, you see this little finger banger icon right there. This allows you to pinpoint exactly which luminance values you want to target. Ooh. So let's find a good neutral place to select and just click and hold and drag it up or down. We're down, down, and then... Okay, we got our highlights looking right. Now let's create another curves layer and do the same for the midtones. Bada bing, bada boom. Now it's taking a bit too much out from the highlights on her side and her abs and her face, so we're gonna mask that off. What is masking you say? See the little white box next to your adjustment layers? That's your mask box. Most of you probably knew that, but for those who have always been wondering, yep, that's what that is. So click the mask box next to the curves layer we just made. Now you'll notice that your palette is now only black and white. Masks use absolute luminance values to determine transparency or alpha channel if you're a cool kid like us. So you can paint on all sorts of nifty things just using white, black, and all of them shades of gray in between. I think there's like 256, I don't know. Either way, let's grab a brush and make it super soft. Lower the fill to about 15%. Press X to flip the palette, so we'll be using black instead of white. Now very carefully, paint away the area where the highlights were coming through. Boom, look at that. We got our highlights, but we also still got our color. But we've got some issues here, right? Ninja Turtles don't have green hair. I mean, they don't have any hair at all, really. But our Ninja Turtles don't have green hair. Plus, the shelves are all green now. Yucky. So let's take care of that quick. So turn off all your solid color layers, except those mid-tones, to keep this nice and easy. If you were going to guess mask it, then you're absolutely right. You win a prize. Now zoom in, either using Control and Plus, or hold Alt and use your scroll wheel. Click in your mask and get a small brush. It's about 85% hard, giggity. And turn the fill back up to 100%. Now when I'm doing a really fine-tuned mask like this, I like to outline everything in a super small brush, getting bigger as I get to the larger shapes. The best thing about masks is if you screw up, just press X to make your brush white and boom, you can just unpaint whatever you painted. It's totally non-destructive, totally easy to do. So if you accidentally get a little skin, don't worry. Just switch to white, paint over it, then switch back to black and keep going. It takes a bit of time to do, but like anything in art, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. And everyone in this field does masking, so I'm not sure what my point is. Don't worry too much about the thinner hairs, as the color from the skin will be reflecting off them anyway, so they can be a little green. Now, we've got one layer done, and you're thinking, shit, do I have to do all that all over again on the other two layers? Hell no, Cupcake! Control click on the mask box of the layer you just painted, and boom, it makes a perfect selection. Control shift I to invert that selection. Now just make a big ass brush and select the mask boxes for those other two layers after you turn them back on, and paint black over the selection, and Dunsky, no more green hair. Now we got a green person, cool, and if I was lazy, that's where the tutorial would end. But wait, there's more! What if you want to change someone's clothes colors, or the color of a car, or the color of FUCKING ANYTHING? Well, you can use these exact same techniques to do that, and that's what I'm going to show you right now. So we got these here black knee pads now, if we repeat the tactics we used before, make a solid, mask it to the shape of the knee pads, and set it to color, it still doesn't look quite right. They're all really... Either too bright or too dark or not contrasty. Can't really see her Raphael colors popping out. So even if we select those shapes and erase the curves layers we made earlier, which you should do anyway, still doesn't look right. Control click on those knee pad shapes in that mask box, then go to your yin yang and slap on a curves adjustment. Bam, instantly masked onto those shapes. Now let's raise those dark and mid-tones and push the highlights a little bit. Let's get some blend if on some of those shadows out there and then onto the red color, push both the shadows and highlights a bit, boom! Much better. Now in this example, I also created a curves layer just for some of the items like the knee pads and the mask, and I raised and changed the tonal contrast so that we would have our reds fall off properly into the shadows and not just be, look at this red over the shadow because it just messes up the contrast. Oh, also, if you want to, I guess you could do the mask, huh? Boom! We're done! How's she looking? Probably not quite as good as the one that I did for the official version, but this is just a tutorial, and this should give you an idea of how to recolor almost anything that you want in Photoshop.
Thank you for checking out this week's episode of More Than Photography, y'all. We're loving all that feedback you guys have been giving us about that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles shoot. And if you follow us on Facebook and Instagram, you'll notice that next week's shoot has already been posted. That's right, it's John Motherflippin' Constantine, bitches. The British one, not the Keanu Reeves one. But would you like to see us do a shoot on a future episode? What tips, tricks, and effects would you like to learn? Let us know in the comment section below and we'll get it right on it. Follow us on Facebook or Instagram to keep up to date with what we're doing behind the scenes and what upcoming shoots we got going for y'all. If you'd like to help us keep this show going, then support us on Patreon. It's only $1 a month, and I'm not gonna lie to you, if you don't, this show probably won't make it beyond the corona apocalypse without your help. No pressure. Also, if you want a print of this week's shoot or any of the shoots we've done in the past, mm. merch store down below, threadless.com. God, they're so good. Also, if you're a photographer that's been affected by COVID-19, in the links below, you'll find something from the lovely people over at Flurn. Flurn has created a page to help out photographers who are struggling in these times. Check those out. Love you guys. I hope you're staying safe, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>